Hey, welcome back to another episode of Nerdcraft. And today we're gonna finally get to that copper farm I've been wanting to build for the longest time now. Sure, in 118 you can mine for copper and there is quite a bit of copper to be had and copper to be had, I've certainly had my fill of in all of the caves that are nearby. And now we're kind of starting to exhaust the resource of copper nearby, or at least the resource I wish to mine up because it does take quite a bit of time to mine all the copper. Now you can find some copper veins and whatnot, but personally, I don't really want to do that. I much rather take the approach of making divots in the ground. Thanks creepers. Um, I much rather take the approach of the game mining it for me or in this case getting it from drowned so we're going to go ahead and build a copper farm probably right about here so this is right above the zombie spawner that we found not too long ago um right near the base so it's right behind the starter base here and it is going to be quite a monstrosity so i'm going to be building something similar to what i've done before um, kind of an adaptation of Nenbaum's farm using the reinforcement mechanic of zombies. So if you damage a zombie, there is a chance that it will spawn another zombie to come help fight. And so you just do that over and over and over again. Um, usually with a large amount of snow golems. However, this time we're not going to be doing that. We're going to be damaging them in a different way. So look forward to that very soon um now the dilemma i've had is while this is a very convenient spot to build it it is also a spot that happens to be near um, my iron farm it's also near a bunch of villagers over there and near our dear friend grizz critter uh, who has returned and i of course worry about lag and server lag and i don't want to you know burden the other players with a lot of lag from you know three or four hundred zombies slash drowned in this farm <laughs> so uh i have to decide whether i want to put it right here next to everything because it is awfully convenient or we build it somewhere out in the ocean because there's actually some guardian temples out there that i would like to uh or ocean monuments that i would like to possibly turn into a guardian farm and it might be good to like build it out there away from everything. So while I decide that, uh, you have, will luckily not have to wait because we're gonna jump right into a time lapse. And wherever I decide to build that, I guess you'll find out in just a second.
All right, there it is, the Finnish Copper Farm. Now, if you have a keen eye, you may recognize this from Tango's recent episode of Hermitcraft Season 9, where he built this exact farm. And that's actually where I got the design from, is watching that video extremely closely, and maybe in slow-mo, and maybe frame by frame, and maybe a dozen times. But I was able to faithfully recreate it and added some additional quality of life improvements that make it a great farm. I mean, granted, the base farm as it is is already a stroke of genius, but, you know, it couldn't hurt to add, you know, say, an on-off switch or something like that. So anyways, if you haven't seen, this farm right here works based off of the reinforcement mechanic that zombies and drowned have. So typically in a copper farm, you would have a setup where a bunch of snow golems are firing snowballs at zombies when they get damaged by, or at least hit by a snowball because they don't really take any damage. It then has a chance to spawn a reinforcement zombie um, in some direction adjacent to the zombie itself that got damaged. So in this case, you know, it could be horizontally, um, you know, on any of the axes, X, Y, and Z. Typically, you do something in the X or Z axis because um, spawning something directly above the zombie would be pretty difficult to do. But you can do it if you really wanted to. Um, but typically, these setups normally involve a couple of these reinforcement chambers, which have to be kept extremely dark. And then, of course, they are built out of glass so that nothing can spawn inside of them, aside from the reinforcements, which actually don't spawn in the center of the block. They spawn in the corner, so that's why we have fence posts inside of there. So there's two of those, one on each side. And when the zombies get into the system, which in this case, they're fed by a zombie spawner, which is also very similar to how Tango has it set up. Um, my setup is a little bit different because our zombie spawner is so close to the surface that I went ahead and built the AFK platform or where we're, the spot where we're AFK just within the distance to activate this spawner. And of course, we have it turned off right now uh, with these redstone lamps, which is hooked up to our on-off system for the entire farm. And so once those do spawn in, they then flow through a water stream and end up in this bubble vader right here. And what makes his farm unique and also, like I said, a stroke of genius, is that he doesn't use snowmen to damage the zombies. So what he does is he actually uses these magma blocks right here. Now, normally that wouldn't necessarily cause a reinforcement to spawn, but because we have this villager right here, they have an active target, and when they have an active target and get damaged by anything, including these magma blocks right here, there is a chance to spawn a reinforcement zombie. And so what's kind of cool is, so they flow up in this section right up here. They get split off into these two chambers. They then fall down to another section right here where there's water at their head level, and then they get converted into drowned. Or at least that process starts. It does take a little bit of time after they've been exposed to the water for, I believe it's 10 seconds, to actually convert into a drown themselves. So when they fall down onto these magma blocks right here, they're actually a zombie. And then once they get converted, they become a drowned. And what's kind of cool about that is when they get converted, that counter, the random chance that they have to spawn reinforcements resets so it's like two opportunities with each of the zombies slash drowned to spawn reinforcements so this is the afk section right here and sleep so we can see everything just fine all right so this is the afk section right here we afk in the center spot right down here and then we have you know within um arm's length or attack range of the actual zombies themselves Right now, like I said, this is in the, the farm is off right now. So we have lava that's on each side that flows over these. Um, it's kind of hard to see here. It flows over these chains. So the chains keep the lava from touching the water and creating a stony mess. And also allow the drown to flow into them because the chain is halfway into the block. 
they are able to actually um, fall into the lava. Uh, some other improvements I made aside from the on-off switch, and there's lights, of course, in these uh, reinforcement chambers as well, so that will stop them from reinforcing when, or stop the reinforcements from being called when they're getting damaged while the farm is off. Um, the other thing I did is I added hoppers underneath the AFK section right here. So I don't believe in Tango's farm he has hoppers under here, but I was finding even though we do have this wall of trap doors to kind of keep the items in our water stream, I was still getting items piling up on the side here. And so what this does is it then feeds into an automatic dropper that's down here, and then the any items do end up landing next to me end up getting popped out of here and then going into our water stream. So then the water stream, you know, hits this chest right here and then flows over to our two item filters. We have these both for copper ingots, of course, and then everything else gets burned from the fire. So what it, typically I do is I actually keep rotten flesh in my off tan and then I use a macro to, you know, attack with my left click of a mouse and then do the wonderful uh, F3 plus T trick for the right click to basically hold that down. So as I get hungry, I'm eating rotten flesh, which, you know, it does fill your hunger in. And I'm constantly getting that supply refreshed because it's constantly flowing in here and I'm basically picking those up. Uh, what else? So then um, one other thing too is we need to make sure before the farm is started that the witches are all throwing their bottles. Um, and that actually is a very important. So typically if the zombies were just to fall onto these magma blocks right here, they would take so much damage that they would eventually die. But Tango's design allows the witches right here to, since they're getting attacked by the snow golem, they're throwing potions of harming. But since those potions of harming can't actually hit the snow golem because of all these bubble columns, they are floating up and smashing against the bottom of these magma blocks. And what that does is the harming potions, because zombies and drowned are undead, harming potions actually are like healing potions for them. And so they're constantly getting their health refreshed, um, allowing them to take damage for a longer period of time, and they're not dying. So we have all that. And um, what I did also is I moved our which jiggles switch right here inside the AFK area so it's not over there outside much like Tango's design. So, so those are some of the improvements I did on this farm and um, the rates have been pretty good. I've been getting about a full double chest and a half I think after about eight hours which is pretty good. I mean copper is still pretty hard to come by um, but I couldn't decide and I know that I was kind of going back and forth about you know which plate you know what where should i build this farm should i build the version that's right here um that's using this uh spawner because i mean i did have it so close to the base but i was concerned about lag and you know what if that causes too much lag for frizz over there so you know what i did because i'm crazy like that i built two farms so let's go check out the other one So the second farm is also similar to the first one, but is a little bit more of my design. Um, and I will show you why. You'll notice we have no bubble vaders. There is no way to feed this farm externally. The farm is self-starting. So this is a design that I made that adapts Tango's design a bit to make it a self-starting farm. So let me show you kind of how this works. And we're going to go ahead and hop into my camera account and take a look at it from there. So here's the farm as it is. And this farm also looks very similar to Tango's, but it is functionally, at least for the zombie portion of it, different. And I'll show you how. So what we've done is we've made some modifications to the spawning chambers right here on the side, the reinforcements. And what happens here is, unlike the other chambers, which are built completely out of this tinted glass, at least in this section right here where the zombies would normally spawn, we have it actually built out of a spawnable block. 
And on top of that, we also have spawnable blocks inside here. We're creating a larger spawning chamber. And so what this does is this spawns all sorts of mobs because we are far above any spawnable location. The mobs can only spawn in this farm. And what happens is any zombies that spawn in here are immediately attracted to these turtle eggs. And the turtle eggs are positioned in a couple locations here. So we have a set of them over here. And then there's a set mirrored on the other side. Once they run in here to grab these turtle legs, they then fall into these other water streams. These water streams then push them all the way down to the end. And they end up into the system. And that's how we feed the system. Now you may be thinking, but what about the skeletons and the creepers and all that stuff? You're just going to have a bunch of different mobs in there. And that's going to be a nightmare. Well, we have a mob filter. And it works out pretty cool. So... Right here, once our mobs uh, kind of get pushed up in here, and we could have, you know, skeletons and creepers and stuff in the system. So, undead mobs sink in water, whereas creepers are not undead, so they float. So, what ends up happening here is when they end up going through this bubble vader, they flow on down, they hit this chain. Now, zombies and skeletons are going to fall down right here. The creepers, their head's going to get caught in this water, and they're going to flow up. And then they float into the lava, and they die. The skeletons are going to sink down. So zombies are the only thing that can fit between this um, campfire and the chain that's uniquely spaced to only fit zombies. And so zombies will just flow right through here like nothing. The skeletons, being too big will actually fall down into this lava. And so it filters out everything except for our zombies. Now, occasionally, creepers are a bit shorter. They, once the system gets going, the creepers may get pushed through that hole anyways. But not to fear, because once they end up down here in the bottom, uh, once they do get to these magma blocks, or down the bottom here, actually, these magma blocks, uh, they die. Because they're hitting, getting hit by harming potions, they're stepping on this, you know, they end up not being able to survive because of all the damage they're taking, and they die anyway. So it's, it's pretty creeper-proof in that sense. Um, but yeah, it works out great, and the best part about it is both farms take about the same time to get started. I believe this farm takes a little bit longer. It's, I think, about 5 to 10 minutes to get going and then once it does get going you know it ramps up just like the spawner base farm would but this one allows you to build it in any place that you want you don't have to worry about having a zombie spawner nearby and then functionally it works the same as far as you know your afk spot you're going to be in here and your afk and then of course you know smashing drowned as they come through so I had a lot of fun putting this together um, out of the respect to Tango and a lot of the Redstone community. I'm not necessarily going to be putting out a tutorial for this at the moment. I will just take the approach of waiting for Tango to release a design tutorial or at least overview of his farm. And when he does that, I can go ahead and put this out and show my modifications to it. It's just not fair to him. And I've discussed it actually with him, um, letting him know that that was my approach with this. and. I think he's cool with it. I think he kind of agrees. But I understand his schedule is busy. So, but that's that. Um, so, yeah, two copper farms. I run both of them. And I think, believe this one still has the copper inside of it. I don't believe I've emptied this. Oh, maybe I have. Uh, this one I only AFK'd for about four hours. So, we haven't quite filled that up. Um, but yeah, still both very effective. And, you know, an excuse to build more than one farm. Always love that. So, all right. So let's head back to the base and check out some of the other stuff I've been working on. You know, back at the base here, uh, one thing I probably will be adding in the near future is a facade to this farm as well. So that it's not just a raw farm just kind of sitting out here. So we'll have to put a building around this at some point. I do want to start actually working more on the city that we have here um we have a few buildings but i need to get some more buildings actually built just for shops and just to kind of fill in everything so that'll be something that we'll be working on in the near future um also terraforming 
I need to figure out how I want this to go, but I'm, I'm thinking we end up, we might end up making a mountain or at least some hills over here because it is quite flat and I've been kind of expanding out the land, but it's just all flat and that's kind of boring. So we're going to have to get fancy with it and figure out a way to terraform that. And I'm not great at terraforming. So I'm going to have to play around with that for a little bit and see what I can do about that. Oh, one other thing I did forget to mention. So uh, with our witches in the back here. So Tango used the method of creating a raid. Well, his sense is his farm is in the middle of the ocean. He ended up creating a raid and then filtering out the witches using lava. Um, that's kind of dangerous for me to do that right here. So instead of spawning a raid, um, and as you probably saw in the time lapse, we took the approach of putting some villagers in there. And then once we have the villagers in there, of course, if you strike them with lightning, they turn in the witches. And it was just a very easy process of putting a lightning rod there. I actually ended up using my trident to, uh, my channeling trident to strike it with lightning. And ironically enough, it also got a natural strike of lightning right afterwards. So you probably don't even need a channeling trident to do that. But, you know, a little bit of a lightning rod and you're good to go. Of course, you'll want to do that before you build this wing on this side. Um, that way, you know, it has access to the sky and lightning can strike down on it. But that worked out really good. And uh, that'd be the way I'd recommend doing it for anybody that ends up building a farm like this or similar in the future. So, just a quick little tip. Hey, everyone. That's it for the episode. I appreciate you guys checking it out. Um, thank you for all the likes and wonderful feedback. You know, I think the most important thing you can do is subscribe to the channel. We just passed 300 subscribers recently. And it's fantastic, but we have a long way to go before we can get to 500 and then 1,000. And then, as some folks said in in our comments, up to a million. That's going to be a long time. So I appreciate you know all the well wishes and stuff, but the best thing you can do is subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any of our content. So thank you, and have a great day. Safe travels, everyone.